Isn't God good? Uh, it's such an awesome day to be alive in the Lord. I want y'all to, everybody at your house, stand up. We're going to worship God together. Everybody here, we're going to stand up and worship God together too. God is awesome, as always. I can't think of a time when He was not awesome. Amen. We still have people that aren't feeling good. Remember, we got member Jeannie uh, in our prayers. And there's others. Uh, we just don't want to forget anybody. But, but uh, we want to know that God's got this. And I'm wearing my special one today. And my special one today is Bethany's two, two of her favorite sayings. God's got this. And either way, I win. God's awesome. Amen. Y'all stand up. Everybody stand up and say this with me. Ready? Say it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, here we go. It's going to get there eventually. There we go. There it is. Eventually again. Okay, there you go. This is the year, y'all say this, this is the year that the Lord has made. Amen? And then watch this, 2022 20, 20, is our year of hope. Amen? Somebody look at somebody and say it's our year of hope. Amen? God's good. Okay, this person is there. There it is. Say this with me. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. Accept my worship, oh Lord. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 Hey, God is awesome. All the time, God is awesome. We can see some courses today, and y'all know all these courses. Y'all raised on them. I, some of you even cut your teeth singing them in your crib. Amen. Well, maybe I'm not sure. Uh, not everybody could sing when they were baby, but every last one of them could holler. <laughs> Are you ready? How I many there's power in the blood? There is power. Give Lord another hand clap of praise. 
Amen. Well, now, we're going to go to Lord in prayer. Does anybody have a special spoken request? Amen. You know, I actually, if you look on the sign out there, it said COVID-19 bows to John 3.16. I had just left the COVID ward uh, at the hospital. And as I was riding down the road, the Lord spoke to me and said, COVID-19 has to bow to John 3.16. Amen. God's got this. Get over the heck out of my head. Come on, that's right. God's got this. God's got this. All right, let's go ahead and go to order prayer. Anybody else before, before we go to order prayer? Ready? Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you're alive and well and on the throne. We thank you, God, for what you do for us, Lord, and in us through us, in us, and for us. I thank you, Lord, for touching those that are sick. Touch Frankie and her cousin. I ask you to continue to touch Francis, Lord. Let her feel your power and holy anointing. And God, touch Jeannie. Let her feel your power and holy anointing. And Lord, touch your family. Lord, we know, God, that it's not easy when you're, when you're fighting a battle where you've got to let go of the reins and let God handle it. So God, we've let go of the reins. It's in your hands with all these people. God, touch in a very powerful Powerful, powerful way. We got family members that need your touch. Lord, there's unspoken requests, Lord. Father, I know a family that's going through some legal stuff tomorrow. I ask you to bless them and the children in a very powerful way. Lord, you've got all this. We trust you 100%. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. Keep on playing, brother. I'm not sure if I can remember how all the words go, but let's all sing it with you.
uh, when you're doing your prayer request or prayers, remember, uh, y'all remember, some of y'all remember Joe Hartman. Joe Hartman's the guy that, that ran a sound for his son and helped put in the new system. Uh, he moved away to the Outer Banks. Uh, and bless his heart, uh, he died. And so uh, I did his funeral yesterday. And so remember that family because uh, they, one, one, he got COVID and it was unexpected. And so remember his family uh, when you're praying. And remember, God's got this. Amen. God's got this. 100%. God's got this. Now sing, I feel the rain. Ready? I feel the rain. She means, she said, you mean a, a brand new Cadillac? 
He said, no, a 1979 Cadillac. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yet pursuing. Now, now, now again, I, I didn't really know when we started doing all this how things were going to turn out, and so I thank God that, that God is in control of all this, and I know that God is 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 ministering to us in very special ways. Uh, and I just can't even begin to tell you all the times recently where I, I think something is going on or something's happening. I realize the whole time that, that even if it's bad or seems bad, God's used it for somebody's good. And, and sometimes sometimes God allows bad things to happen to us just so we can show other people how to handle it. Show them good attitudes and show them what faith is all about. Because you can talk about faith as long as you're driving that Cadillac. But when you go through things and you're still trusting God and you're still praising this thing, that's when faith really stands out strong. Amen. So, so just to, just we're just going to throw a few things up here just to get us in, in going, and we're going to talk about faith is still pursuing. So remember, God gives us victory. Every last one of us, although we don't necessarily see it all the time, although we don't feel it all the time, we have to understand that God wants us to live a victorious life. I mean, one of victory after victory after victory. And so remember this, save desires to affect your thinking and your life and your relationships in order to can infect your thinking, your life, and your relationships. Because he wants your victory. Satan doesn't have victory. He will never have victory, and he doesn't want us to have victory. So he wants to steal our God-given victory because since he can't have it, he doesn't want us. Have you ever seen somebody because they couldn't get it, they didn't want you to have it? Okay, Satan can't have it. So because Satan can't have it, Satan doesn't want you to, to have it. Amen? And so, so again, God's victory, it should be common uh, in the life of the believer. Uh, and remember this, though, they're very strong. You've got you to gotta watch this now. God's victory is never a passive word. There people say, I got the victory, I got the victory. Let me tell you something. If you got the victory, that means you've been through something. Amen? A shallow victory means nothing to me. Don't come talk to me and tell me about your shallow victory. But when you've been through something and you're still standing, I want to hear your story. I want to hear what's going on in your life. I want to hear what God did. And it indicates more than success uh, in that struggle. So now watch this. Again, his, his, his victory is a gift. No, it's a gift. It's an attitude. And not only is it an attitude, but it is very much unstoppable. And here's the key. Here's the key to this whole thing about God's victory. Ready? God's victory is not based on your circumstance. You see, 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 you can't look on the outside and judge whether you've got the victory or not. You can't look while the bombs are bursting or while the, while the stuff's going on around you and the dust is up and you can't see anything. You can't be declaring victory looking at the outside. But what we've got to do is we've got to look up and we've got to look with the end. That's how we declare victory. That's how the victory is done uh, in God's economy. Now, now, now just, just one more and then we're going to go into the worn out still going. The remnant. God loves to use the remnant. Here's Gideon at 32,000. God took 32,000 down to just 300. Okay? And so again, where did everybody go? Have you ever heard that in your life? You're trying to work for God. You're trying to do things for God. You got your mind made up. We're going to get it done. And you got this guy go, yeah, we're here. You can count us in. And then when it's time to get it done, you don't see him. You ever been there? Amen? So I said, where did everybody go? But through the Bible, God has always chosen this remnant to fulfill his mighty purpose. Because the remnant itself means the, the remaining ones, the ones that are left. You know, those, here it is, who got back up, who actually stuck it out, who would not give in and still believe in God's cause. That's the one that, that God is using. Amen? That's the remnant. And so it's, it's, it's in this remnant that God wants to show his power and show his anointing in such a way that everybody's going to know that it was God that did this. And we have a brand new phenomenon. Uh, COVID-19 not only affected uh, uh, lifestyles, but COVID-19 also affected the church. And so because COVID-19 affected the church, there's nothing wrong with somebody sick. They're not doing good. Uh, that's, what we got on, that's what we got on Facebook and on YouTube. It's there for people that can't be here because they're working or, or, or they're sick or whatever. But when you make it a lifestyle, just so you don't have to go, go uh, and, and get up. You know, it's just I'm going to go in there and I'm going to wash my dishes while it's going on. And I'm going to do this while it's going on. Do this and this. What happens is you get lost in the shuffle. I'm going to tell you what. 
Well, what it is, you don't get a sermon, you get a sermonette. And sermonettes make Christianettes. Amen? Because you're not really hearing what's going on. Plus, it's a collective thing. We're together, and collective faith is something very special about it. So remember, it's out there. If you're not feeling good, you know, we got some day that's sick. And I'm glad that we've got YouTube and we've got uh, Facebook that we can reach out to. There's other people that want to be here, but they live hours away. And I thank God for that. I'm not talking about that. It's got it's a very useful, useful tool. But when it becomes this and when it, when it changes from being a tool to something to enable spiritual laziness, there's a problem. Okay? So now, so now watch this. Watch, 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 be careful. So, so, I'm with you. He said, I'm with you every step of the way. That's what God said. So God's remnant would be few. Okay? Just 300. But the testimony now is nothing is impossible with God. Think about it. 300 against 2 men to even count. And this is where we ended last week. He gave him such great victory. And here it is. Little as much when it's in God's hands. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. And he says also the weapons of his warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Now, now, now let's get ready to go there. Y'all ready to go on in? Somebody said let down the plow, Pastor. All right, good, 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 good. Read that. Y'all just read it. God has a purpose for your pain, a reason for your struggles, a reward for your faithfulness. Don't give up. Wow. You know, just in the last couple of weeks, I, 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 I hear somebody start telling their story or counseling somebody or just in a grocery store or, or, or something. And, and I start, people just come and start talking and telling their story. And as I hear their stories, I begin to realize, and I tell them, you know, you know, don't, don't be discouraged because God's using this to mold you, to shape you. Uh, sometimes it's sandpaper to run off the rough, to get rid of the rough edges. And sometimes you're just on the potter's wheel and God's remolding you and shaping you into a very beautiful work. And you don't understand what, what's going on. You know, uh, this morning, you know, normally where God's got this bracelet. But, but remember, Bethany had two seconds the whole time she was sick. But I'd tell her, I'm sorry you got cancer. And I'd say, I, 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 you know, I wish I could take your place. And things like that. And she said, don't worry about it, Dad. Because either way, I win. So that's what I'm wearing today, that either way, I win. You know, because no matter what's going on around us, either way, we win. Because victory is on the inside before it gets on the outside. So, so, so watch this. A terrible thing had happened to Gideon. Here's Gideon. He had 32,000 men, which was no way could even handle what was going on. And God said, you got too many because you can think you did it. So by the time God whittled it down, it was only 300. So now he's taken to 300. And now the 300 are chasing what's left of this big multitude that have already been, been, been just beat. Stand back to this one time. Do this over again. I want, I want to take it slow and easy for it. I want somebody to hear this. Okay. Gideon's army was in the middle of, watch, the will of God. They were in the middle of the plan of God. They were in the middle of the power of God. They were in the middle of the victory of God. Yet still, they grew faint. Wow. Somebody needs to hear this today. Look, they were in the will of God, the plan of God, in the power of God, in the victory of God. Yet they still were wore out. I don't know who needs to hear that, but I can tell you right now, today's your day to understand that even though you're wore out, God's got you. God has not let you down. God has not forgot you. He knows where you're at and God's going to take care of you. Gideon was in the middle, right at right, smack in the middle where God wanted him. But now he is so wore out, he can hardly even go. And as he starts asking for help, he's asking for help all along the way as he's chasing after, after the rest of those uh, that mighty, mighty army that he's going after. And nobody wants to help him. It's just him and his 300. So now, watch this. Tiredness can kill. Take a break. Tiredness can kill. You're riding down the road, tiredness can kill. Take, take, take a break. Here's the characteristics. When somebody is spiritually wore out. I'm not talking about physically now. I'm talking about spiritually. There's a big difference. I can be physically wore out and still have my be intact with God. But I can tell you that I can still have my strength and be wore out with God. So this, so this, this is where this is going. So watch. Characteristics of the faint. Faintness. Ready? First, there's a loss of strength. 
You get weak. You get feeble. But once you stood before your Goliath, now you find yourself kind of fearing that Goliath coming up again. A loss of serenity. You know, there's a sense of distress. There's no peace uh, in your life. And then there is a loss of stamina. You just kind of fade away. Let me show a biblical example of somebody this happened to. Genesis 25 and 30 and 31. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. I am whittling away to nothing. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Do you see the connection in the spiritual? And how this can happen to you? You see, see Satan, Satan's hands at work. He doesn't just want to destroy you. He wants to destroy your destiny. He doesn't want to take you down now. He wants to take you down and keep you down. He wants to put you under his thumb. And that's what he was doing with Esau, with Jacob, because he had the birthright. He was the man. And he let, because he was faint, he failed for something as simple as, as giving up his birthright, his destiny. So now, watch this. Your legs are not given out, your head's given up. Keep going. Hmm. One more time. I, I don't like to repeat myself, but these things are just so good, you just gotta, you know, kind of like that song that BJ was just playing. Oh man, it's awesome. Your legs aren't given out, your head's given up. Keep on going. So now, if you're already growing faint, if you leave it unattended, if you, you don't take it to God, if you don't trust God in this thing and, and really, 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 really give it to Him now, you get a loss of vision. Why am I even fighting anyway? Has anybody ever felt that way? You know, I was all good. Oh, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's go ahead and fight the devil. We're going to take the devil down, take down his people. I didn't know along the way that I was going to have to not only fight him, but there could be family members that said I was crazy. My friends are going to go the other way. Even some of my family go the other way. And now things are starting to get out of hand, and I don't even can't find any peace. I've lost my stamina. I've lost my ability to think. Why am I even fighting? Why am I not careful, Satan's going to put you <laughs> under his thumb and take you down and keep you down. Then there's a loss of hope. It's hard to see help coming. I know the Bible said, he said he would never leave me or forsake me. I can always say that he is my helper. I shall not fear what man shall do unto me, but right now I can't feel it. I feel alone, God. Where are you? You ever felt that way? Be careful. It's not a sin to feel that way. It's a sin to stay that way and see what it does to you. Because it's going to take you down. And then loss of victory. You just give in. You know what? I'm not going to fight it anymore. I'm just going to give in. I'm just going to quit fighting. Now, I in Genesis. Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die. What profit shall this birthright be to me? Give me the pottage. Wow. There's a lot of pottage being thrown out today in all kinds of ways. And COVID-19 is a carrier of it. People use it as an excuse now. Other people and other things and other agencies are using it as an excuse to get us to give up our fight. I'm here to tell you something. God's got you. You gotta trust him. So watch this. He had to understand at this point there was a great thing happening. Just, sometimes it takes an overwhelming breakdown to have an undeniable breakthrough. Y'all said it with me. Sometimes it takes an overwhelming breakdown to have an undeniable breakthrough. You see, Gideon didn't realize there was a great thing happening. He had a great fatigue. His guys were wore out. They could barely move. They were hungry. They were sore. They were tired. Yes, God gave them the victory, but now they're having to chase. And now they've been chasing for miles. And they've been fighting every step of the way. They're chasing and fighting, chasing and fighting, chasing and fighting. So they're running without food, without water. They're swinging their swords. They're, they're, they're dodging arrows. Can you imagine what kind of battle that's going on these guys are going through? 
They were at their breaking point. Please don't raise your hand. But have you ever been at your breaking point spiritually? Have you ever been at your breaking point, period? Have you ever been to the point where you just said, God, just take it. I don't want it. I threw it. I thought I wanted it. I don't want it anymore. You take it. Just go ahead and kill me and get it over with. That's the breaking point. But here's what I'm going to tell you about the breaking point. Listen carefully. The breaking point, your breaking point, is, listen very carefully, is your point of breakthrough. It's at your breaking point when you've lost every bit of ability. That's when your point of breakthrough comes. That's why this is where it all started at. Do not grow weary in well doing. For in due season we're going to reap if we faint not. So you see, Satan, he wants to come at us because he wants to look. He would look. Why is he coming at us? Because he wants to take the word away from us. And if he takes the word away from us, listen carefully. If he takes the word, he takes our direction. He takes our distinction. He takes our destiny away. If he can take the word from you, why? And so now, in some places, there are people being arrested for what? Preaching the word. Some people are being arrested for hate crimes for preaching the word. You see, it would never happen in the USA. There's a lot of things I thought would never happen in the USA that's happening now. Don't be fooled by that. Can't we just all get a long thing and we all got to blend in and we all got to be able to learn how to agree and be tolerant to each other because we can be tolerant to everybody, but the one thing they don't want to be tolerant is with Christians. The world does not want to be tolerant with you. They want you to shut up. Be tolerant of me and you shut up. That's, what, that's what's going on right now. And if you think I'm lying, just look. It's happening. So now, when you find yourself at your point of breakthrough, here's what I'm going to tell you to do. I love this. Steve Jobs said this. Sometimes life hits you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. The very first thing you got to do when you find yourself worn out is keep your head. One of my favorite scriptures. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Trust in the Lord forever for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. That word keep is a military term. It means to guard or it means to maintain. So he will guard you with perfect peace. And that word perfect peace means complete completeness. It means he's got you in every area of your life. He can bring you peace. And he says, whose mind, that word mind is your imagination and your mind and your, your, your work. Uh, uh, if you keep it, stay it on him. Now stay, how, how do we stay it on him? We keep the word alive in our heart. We keep God's life and word alive in us. Everlasting, uncomprehending space and time. He's going to be our everlasting strength, our cliff, our rock, our boulder. I, I like another version of this. The message. People with their minds set on you, you keep them, you keep completely whole, steady on their feet because they keep it and don't quit. And then the Amplified Version. You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace whose mind, both his inclination and his character, is stayed on you because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. So number one, when you find yourself wore out, you got to keep your head. When you want to quit, when everything within you is trying to quit, keep your head. When Satan is trying to take your mind and destroy it, trying to get you not to believe the Word of God or to twist the Word of God, keep your head in the game. Keep your head in the game. Now, number two. I love this one. And remember, do not lose heart. You were made for these times. You think God made a mistake by putting you here? You think God made a mistake by putting you in this time and era? You know, God could have let you be born in, in the 1800s, the 1700s. He could let you be born in B.C. But God put you in this time, this day, to make an effect in His arena in our lives. Every last one of us affect each other. So now watch. Secondly, first keep your head, next keep your heart. 
The Bible says in John 14 and 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now, now let's just kind of break that down a little bit. That heart is your thoughts, your feelings. It is your mind. It is where the root of courage comes from. And he says, watch. He says, let not your mind be troubled. You know what Satan wants to do to us? Listen carefully. He wants to, he wants to take away your ability to think. Have you ever been doing something the way you're doing something, somebody else comes in and says something, especially if you do maintenance. If you do maintenance for a living anywhere and you're on a plant site, I can tell you what happened. You're working on one thing and then somebody else comes up and says, look, I got a quick question. That word quick <sighs> means nothing. That word quick means stop what you're doing because you're going to be here a while. I got a quick question. And so when you're doing the maintenance here, then they come up, then why are you doing that? Then somebody, you know, I can remember at times when I was at, when I was at Procter and Gamble, I can remember at times that somebody said, why do you eat so fast? I said, because I can't remember a time in the last couple of weeks where I actually got a chance to take a full run lunch break. Every time I go to lunch, as I'm opening up my month lunch, and I'm sitting down trying to relax, I get called to another area to go take care of something else that's broke down. And so, 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 you know how it is. You've got to try to think. And you have to think on your feet. You know, I, I remember we were the first people to use the barcodes in Greenport. We were the very first ones. And I remember, the, now I'm not talking about the little bitty scan. I'm talking about the big old barcodes where you can actually see them. Uh, uh, binary codes. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, uh, 4, 8, 16, 32. And, and so... When the product would come down the line, it would be up 30 foot in the air. It would come down the line, and if we did not know what was coming, and we saw all of a sudden it started getting clogged up inside. The reason it got clogged up is because the computer didn't know how to read. They didn't know what it was. And so I can remember walking down there, walking down in my head and reading my binary code and putting it in my head thinking about it. And by the time I get to the computer at the other end of the plant, I would already had that figured out and already figured out how many cases we've got. And then I remember putting that binary code in and, and, and doing all that and programming it. And we didn't have that ready access where you could see what you were doing. You would do it and have to wait. We didn't have time to wait. So I would just put it in and trust God to make sure I put it in right. And I go back and do something else. And, and most of the time it was right. But I thought, man, God, what are you doing? And I remember him telling me, I'm teaching you to think on your feet. I said, God, can I just think in a chair? <laughs> he said, he said, no, well, what I'm going to do with you, you're going to have to be able to think on your feet. Now do it. And then I remember as a chaplain in, in, in Greenville Hospital working eight to eight, eight nights late in the morning. And I remember those nights where you just had to think on your feet and you walk in a room with a room full of people. And either there had been a code blue or a death in the family or something very serious. And you had to walk in and they told you you had 10 seconds to review the room. And after you review the room, go ahead and pick out the ones that needed to be talked to first. Ten seconds. And now I think back to Procter and Gamble. Walking down, reading the codes. And God says, see, I know what I'm doing. Our hearts. Then let your hearts, your mind be troubled. He says this, trouble means to be agitated, perplexed, disturbed. He said, you believe, y'all love this. He said, but you believe, watch this, you believe you have faith in God who's far away, who's untouchable at the time because grace has not been poured out. He said, you believe in God who's far away and untouchable. Now I need you to believe in me because I'm here Right now, I'm touchable. I have the revelation. I read the scripture at the funeral yesterday. John 14. I just put the first. I had four there to start with. Do it to the first one. The message. Don't let this throw you. You trust God, don't you? Trust me. Keep your head, keep your heart, and always through. I love this acronym. Don't give up hope. 
hope is, hold on, pain ends. Hold on, pain ends. Keep your hope. Hope has to stay alive. Matter of fact, those guys over in the concentration camps, they said the last thing to die before they would go and give out was their hope. Acts 20, 25. Acts 27, 20 through 25. They're on this ship. They're in a bad fix. They're in a storm. Let me read it to you. Get your Bibles out of Acts 27. Acts 27. I promise you, some of you have been here lately. I know I have. Acts 27, verse 20. And when neither sun nor stars appeared, in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay upon us, meaning that they were being beat to death by the storm. And all hope, y'all say all hope, all hope, that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has gotten and God hath given them thee, all of them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, you should have uh, been good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be given even as he told me, how be it must be cast on a certain island. So now, so watch this. Let's just break this down a little bit. Ready? He said, tonight there stood by me. It means to be at hand, to be ready. He's on a ship that no man can get to. He's on a ship that has no way to even control it anymore. They've thrown it all out. All the tackling is gone. They cannot control this ship. It's being controlled by the storm. I know. I know. How many times have you felt like you couldn't control the storm? The storm was controlling you. Amen. And nobody can get to them. Nobody can get to you. You're in this storm, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. So now, when, when, when Bethany, when Bethany had, when she had that cancer, and there was times. They were trying to fix her, and whatever they would give her, we might, I mean, when they did the chemotherapy, it caused her liver to go up. And then they would have to put her in the hospital because it would kill her. They would put her in the hospital and keep her for a week or two. And then when they tried the immunotherapy, it caused her thyroid to shut down. And that would kill her. And so they put her back in the hospital. And there was times when she would lay there so faint, she could barely move. And they were doing all they could do. They'd already stuck, all, stuck her over everywhere. Big as that girl was, as big as her veins were, they had stuck her so much that her veins had all collapsed. They had to bring a sonar in there and find veins. And I watched these cradle big long needles, these cradle big things. And I never watched, she never one time, not once. She did go out a few times, but she didn't complain. And I remember sometimes I'd kiss her and have to walk out. I watched Linda kiss her, and we'd walk out and we'd pray for her. And say, God, tell us what to do. Because the storm was taking over. And there was nothing we could do. Nothing. But pray. That's where they're at right here. They said all hope was taken away and all we could do is pray. You may be there right now. But I'm here to tell you, we might not can get to you, but God will stand right by you. He's right there. And he said, fear not, don't be alarmed. I got this. And he said, you know what? I believe God. I believe it's going to happen just like he told me. Sometimes we get in the bind, we bring it on ourselves. I'm gonna tell you one. Uh, y'all might not. Y'all might get mad at me. Don't throw anything at me. I went down to Manchester. I'm coming back. 
And then come by, we'll go and tell it. <laughs> I was coming up out of Madison, and, and Linda and I, I, I couldn't even keep up with the, with the speed limit in all these little towns. The speed limit to be changed, just were changed so constantly. And, and plus, uh, my car was saying one thing, and I thought it was updated, but the, the speed limit was another, and cars were passing me, some getting behind me. I mean, it was, it was just crazy. And so I'm trying to keep up with the traffic, and, and I passed by two deputies. Oh, wait. And I have to admit, I was trying to call my father in law on the phone at the same time. Okay, guilty. And also behind me, and one of the police cars is chasing me down in the blue light. I looked at Lynn, I said, Why did you say nothing? We haven't done anything. I said, Well, they're coming out to me. And so we pull over. Man, we pull over. This little guy gets out, bless his heart. And I knew he was new. You could tell he was new. And he started asking, What was I doing? I said, What did I do? He said, Do you realize? You were going 53 and a 35. And I wanted, I could have been a smart and said, you know, if I'd have realized that, I wouldn't have been doing it. <laughs> he says, <laughs> he, I did, and I was being very nice. And he goes, he said, I could tell he was, he was new, and he had somebody in the car with him. So I said, I don't know, he's being trained. And there you got two people in the police car, you're going to get ticked. The one getting trained. And he said, can you tell me what you were doing? I said, well, I just buried a friend. And I said, I'm trying to come back. He said, where are you going? I said, going to Bowman County. Going. To, uh, he said, where are you, Pastor? I told him at Edward. And he said, I'll be right back. And they stayed for the longest time. So I think he was trying to figure something out and talk to him. And Linda said, you laid that pastor thing on kind of hard, didn't you? <laughs> I said, he didn't the storm, did <laughs> And he came back and he said, and he had, and he had, he folded up a little pink slip. And then he says, I'm not sure what he's got. Said it's a pink slip. She says, you can't see pink. I said, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> and, he said, and he apologized. Couldn't believe it. He said, I'm so sorry. He said, I, I wouldn't let you go, but he said, I can't. I've got to give you a ticket. And I said, well, you, I said, I'm guilty. And I said, I didn't see. They said, I said, I was following the traffic. <laughs> Look, and I just told Linda about a preacher saying that he got a ticket. And he told the, told the patrolman he was following the traffic. And he said, don't you know as a child of God, you used to follow everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I said, thank you. He said, I give you the lowest I can give you, exceeding space speed. He said, but I had to give you something. I said, I'll follow you because you're training and you got to do that. That's okay. And I said, look, we're praying for you. You stay safe, and we pray for you every day. And he, he walked away and said, I sure am sorry. <laughs> and <laughs> he walked away and said, not as sorry as I am. <laughs> and so, but even about it, you know, uh, sometimes, and this, this came to me, look, sometimes we bring our stuff on ourselves. I brought it on myself. I did it. I told Linda, she said, I'm so sorry. I said, you don't have to be. I did it. I said, I couldn't see the stop. I couldn't see the sign. I did not see the sign. He said that we're having a problem. People speeding through here. There's a reason why they're speeding through here because they can't see the sign. <coughs> and she said, what you going to do? I said, I'll, I'll figure something out. I said, uh, I said, but I'm not upset. You know, I'm glad you went with me. I, you didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. He was doing his job. So I text Daniel. I said, Daniel, what do I need to do? I said, this little guy gave me a ticket and he said he did he, he just said that, you know, he was sorry, but he had to give him one. And Daniel said, Daddy, he said, well, it's just business, Dad. <laughs> I thought, yeah, it's my business. <laughs> but God spoke to me yesterday, and this is where it's coming from. Sometimes we bring it on ourselves. Be, be real. We want to blame it. Oh, I'm blaming the devil. He done it. No, my foot was on the accelerator. I couldn't see the sign. Wait, I told Linda, I said, don't you know the Bible says signs are to follow believers? And she said, I don't think so. So we had a good laugh. You know, after after I thought I was gonna cry, I had a good laugh. I told him, I said, man, this is the first ticket I had now and we and he says, I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> I said, it's okay. So here we are comforting him, then it's comforting me. And I'm thinking, you know, but here it is. Sometimes we bring it on ourselves. But sometimes you don't. You bring Bethany's cancer on. Didn't bring my mama's diabetes home. But either way about it, know this. God always stands with you. I told Linda Mark when I drove away, I said, you know what I think? I said, I think that young man, because God gives glory out of everything. I said, that young man, he's nervous and he's learning. I said, he needed to have somebody nice talk to him. I think Saturday came up thinking. <laughs> And one time, Daniel gave him a ticket when he was first, he was roped up, and he, he gave him a ticket, and he said, the man said, uh-huh, trying to fill your quota? And Daniel said, yes, sir, one more, and I get the poster. <laughs> All right, get ready. I'm almost through. Psalm 46 and 5. Happy is he that hath God and Jacob for his help. Whose hope is in the Lord his God. That word happy means to be straight, to be level, to be good, to be able to go forward. And that word help means to surround or to aid. God's around you, He's helping you, He's picking you up, and you're walking through that stream. And He's also your hope, because that word hope means to be watching, to expect with patience. So remember, keep your head, keep your heart, keep your hope. How many remember Superman, the very first? I mean, when Superman got really, really awesome. You know, not that stuff where George Reeves is standing on the floor, lit like this, and blowing a fan on him. <laughs> now I'm talking about when the first time they said you would believe a man can fly, Christopher Reeve, remember him, Superman? He didn't think seven Superman movies. And it was just so, so awesome. And Superman racing his horse, or doing his horse, jumping his horse, his horse stood and broke his neck. And he was paralyzed from the neck down the rest of his life. I remember the headline that said Superman wasn't so Superman after all. But honestly, that's in my eyes when he became Superman. Because he did so much for people and he never complained and he always had a good stiff self about him. And he said, don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't sell out. Here's a man paralyzed from the neck now who had everything. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't sell out. So here's the end of the story, and I'm getting really close. Judges 8, 28. Let me just read a little bit first. Let me just read a little bit of this. I'm reading from the message because it's so much easier to understand with all of these and vows taken out and a lot of other stuff. This is just I, I, this just spoke to me a whole lot better. Judges chapter 8, verse 4. Gideon is 300 arrived at Jordan and crossed over they were bone tired, but still pressing to the pursuit. He asked the, son, the, the men of Sukkoth, please give us some loads of bread for my troops I have with me, for they're worn out, and I'm hot on the trail of Zeba and Zalmunna and the Midianite kings. But the leaders in Sukkoth said, you're on a wild goose chase. Why should we help you on a fool's errand? Gideon said, if you say so, but when God gives me Zaba and Zalmunna, I'll give you a thrashing. With your bare flesh, with desert thorns and thistles. He sent from there to Peniel, and I made their same request, but the man of Peniel, like the man of Sukkoth, also refused. He's asking for help as he's defending these people. He's asking for help, and they can't, they can't be bothered. They made light of it. Gideon told him, When I return safe and sound, I'll demolish this tower. And Zidim and Zalmon were in, in Kokar with an army of about 15 companies. All that was left of the fierce fighting force of the Easterners. They had lost 120 companies of soldiers. Judges, chapter 28. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted their heads no more. And the country was in quietness 40 years in the days of Gideon. Let's just break this down quickly. That word subdued means to be brought down. So Midian was brought down. And when it says they lifted up their head no more, means that no more could begin war. Their ability to make war was gone. And that word no more, of course, means not only look, their head, they lifted their heads no more, means also that they were in submission to Israel. And there was quietness, rest and tranquility. 
throughout the land because he finished the job. He followed it through. So now, here, here's, here it is for today. Here, here it is, and then we're going to go home. BJ, come pick every place in the road. Remember, you're not fighting for victory, but from victory. And Jesus Christ has already defeated Satan. Y'all say it again. Y'all say it with me. Remember, we're not fighting for victory, but from victory. And Jesus Christ has already defeated Satan. Yeah. Always remember this. First John 4 and 4. You are of God, little children, and overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. <laughs> You're not fighting to victory. You're fighting in victory. I don't have to win anything. God's already won it. Just like Beth used to say, Dad, don't worry about it. Either way, I win. If God heals me, I win. I'm going to testify. If God takes me to heaven, I win. I get a new body. And why? And I still am going to testify. Either way, I win. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In Him will my heart, in Him my heart trust. I am helped. Psalm 28 and 7. Everybody stand up. I've watched over the last couple of years with all of this pandemic a lot of people lost a lot of things but the greatest thing that was lost in a lot of people was hope not only did they lose hope but they began to lose their strength and their faith that God has His word out. I believe that we are on the point of breakthrough. You can see it happening all around us. Breakthrough. 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 If we don't give up, if we stay in the game, keep our head, we're going to see something powerful happen. Said, or she said that he didn't want to 
deal with it. You want to talk about it, you want to deal with it. Say, but today, you start to deal with it.
if you haven't had a chance to look at Facebook Live or Build Lives for the Kingdom on Wednesday nights, look at it because uh, Jimmy Ruffin asked a couple of weeks ago, could I do developing a PMA? A PMA is a positive mental attitude. And so we've been talking about that. And as I've been studying about that and, and, and doing it on Facebook, the Lord gave me a sermon. And so next week, we're going to talk about being positive. Amen? Amen. We can be positive. No matter how bad it looks, we can still be positive. Amen? Amen. Y'all looking good. I tell y'all guys are looking good. Amen. With the exception of a few of you, y'all guys are really looking good. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Father God, we love you, Lord. We praise your holy, precious name. And Lord, we just thank you for being there by our side, Lord, and being our help to take us through these troubled times. And let us not worry. Give us peace, Lord, because we know that you're beside us. Jesus.